So it's five o'clock. Uh, hello, parents and families. I am so delighted yet again, third time over to be here with you all today. I hope we have some new parents uh, coming in uh, along with my colleagues from financial aid and student financials. We welcome you to Cal Maritime and for joining us as Keel Holler families. My name is Vanita Dillon. I serve as the new student and family programs director, which means I am your uh, liaison here at Cal Maritime. You have likely seen my posts at Facebook and uh, going forward, I'll probably be the person that you connect with uh, if you have any questions. Um, as we go through this uh, presentation, I will be putting my phone number in chat. I'll wait a little bit so that those of um, those families who are joining in a little bit late will still have access to it. Um, if you don't already have it, please note it down. You can reach out to me um, at via chat or via call on my cell phone. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items um, for staying focused on today's topic. Uh, please keep your devices on, on mute during the presentation. Uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions at the end of today's presentation. And you can do that by putting your questions in chat um, throughout the presentation or when it ends, uh, if your questions have not been answered. And for those of you who might be either traveling or are unable to type in your uh, questions, at the tail end of the, uh, the presentation, we'll open it up uh, for you to unmute and uh, verbally ask your, your uh, questions. Uh, if you need specific details about your student, this might not be the best uh, avenue for that uh, because these recordings are um, posted online and we don't, we want to be mindful of what is shared here. Um, please uh, send those queries either to our presenters or to me. Uh, best email to use for that is um, orientation at csum.edu and if um, I can't answer the questions. I'm very happy to forward those to uh, folks on the call today. If you think of something after today's call, same, same contact orientation at csum.edu. Um, and I make uh, a request to all of you um, that if you have questions that are not related to our presenters today, um, which is about financial aid and student financials. Uh, again, either wait for those uh, experts to be with us in coming weeks uh, or use the same uh, email address orientation at csum.edu and I will do my best to get you those responses quickly. Um, if there is time at the end, I would love to cover what you expect on the 21st when you're here with your cadets. Um, and before I offer the floor to our presenters, I make uh, a request, another request of you. Please talk to your cadet uh, after this call. And if they haven't already, request them to send us their photo for their um, college ID, uh, which will allow them to get into their rooms and the building. Um, we have not received everyone's um, submission, so we're using every possible way to get those over to us. Um, with that, I would, um, I'm gonna offer up the floor to our presenters today. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Vanita. Uh, my name is Priscilla Muha, and I will be going over the presentation for you today, but we also have a few people from the Student Financials Office Frank and I believe Judy might also be online with us. So they will be able to answer things, questions at the end regarding student financials. So let's start with what we're gonna go over. Oops. Um, the thing that we're gonna do is talk about what financial aid office does and what the cashier's office does. So you will see what our responsibilities and our contacts are. We'll go over briefly the financial aid process, uh, cost of attendance, how to access your bill or how your student actually can access their bill and also see their financial aid. 
the types of payment plans available, when refunds will take place. Um, one very, very important financial aid policy, which is called satisfactory academic progress. And lastly, the four most important things that your cadet needs to remember about managing their financial aid and or taking care of their bill. So the financial aid office, think of it this way, in a shortcut, we're responsible for giving the money based on financial aid, um, determining students' awards, and that will include grants, scholarships, student loans, private educational loans, and parent loans. This also includes scholarships from outside agencies, foundations. So anything that is going to be coming into the office based on the student's financial aid. You can reach us at our number that we have posted, 707-654-1287, or you can email us at finaid at csum.edu. We are available Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. The cashier's office is, is a separate office. Uh, they have separate duties, and we, um, we by regulations, we have to stay separate. So the cashier's office is responsible for the billing each term. If there are any additional charges to students' accounts, payments that are made on their behalf, either from family members themselves, financial aid, or outside institutions, um, refunds if they are eligible for a refund, and lastly, uh, tax information. Um, each year, the student will get, if they have um, scholarships that cover things beyond tuition and fees, they will get what's called a 1098T for their tax return or for the parent's tax return. Um, you can reach the folks in the cashier's office at 707-654-1031, or you can email them at studentaccounts at csum.edu. So the financial aid process, I know people who've applied for financial aid thought we've already been through this process, but I just wanna remind you that every October 1st, the new FAFSA, the new free application for federal student aid is going to be available for the coming year. So the 2023-24 award year, the form will be available October 1st of this year. Um, the priority deadline for California residents is March 2nd. It is always March 2nd, no matter what, time, what uh, day of the week that date falls on. If students are selected for a process called verification, we really would like to have that information from them as soon as possible. We start sending out notifications at the beginning of the year. And so they will have plenty of time to make sure that we get all the information that is required. And we typically award our continuing students. The first, as, as a new student, we get the awards out as soon as they've applied and been admitted. But if they um, are a continuing student, they're going to get their packages typically around March. So just be aware of that time frame. The next thing is to go over cost of attendance. Um, we do have this on the financial aid website in crazy detail, but and also the student financials website also has the information. It's called fee schedule. So if you're ever looking for uh, for the um, detail of all, all of the charges that students might be assessed for, if you go on to the Cal Maritime website and just put in the search engine fee schedule you will be able to click on a PDF form and it will tell you everything of what a student can be charged. The cost of attendance that I'm showing you here shows the difference between California residents, Western undergraduate uh, exchange students, and those are students who uh, come from states or regions that are surrounding California. And then lastly, the non-resident um, fees. In this cost of attendance, this is what's, what we base our financial aid on. We're looking at tuition, campus fees, room and board for students living on campus. There is a different charge, or excuse me, a different assessment of those charges if they're living at home or if they are commuting um, off campus. Medical insurance, and that is if a student is not, received, it is not covered by medical insurance by their family or their own insurance policy, 
they are required to purchase it through our, um, our campus. Um, then we also have what I would say some indirect costs. So books and supplies, which are based on students' majors. Uh, this average of $1,032 is, is an average based on their majors and what students have reported to us. Transportation costs. Uh, we know students either are commuting to campus or traveling from far away and they might want to visit their family during, during the year. Um, personal costs. So if students have loan fees, we estimate a loan fee for them. And of course, the one-time purchase of their C bag, which is their uniform expenses. And lastly, a one-time cost of student orientation fee. So this gives you an overview of what costs could be. Now, again, these can vary um, based on what the needs are of the student. And of course, um, the spending habits of students. So this just gives you an idea. Now, where to find all of this information, uh, the billing and financial aid information, the student is going to log into their student portal. And if you see the green arrow pointing towards the login on our student portal site, they will use their CSUM email address and their pass password to log in to this site. Now, most all, all, almost all the students already have gone on to this site to see the information. So I just wanted to let the parents know what it looks like. Then the next spot that they're going to go on to is our PeopleSoft student systems. Again, where the green arrow is, this will take them to their account. So we've created a Kelly Key Hauler account so you can see what the students see. They will see their class schedule. They will see if they have any holds if they have a to-do list. Now this is where you might find financial aid information um, that is being required of them. They will also be able to see their program advisor. So this is where it will, uh, this is what it looks like on the landing page. If you scroll a little bit long, down further on that page, you will see a section called finances. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is where it says account summary and you see that number of 5,758. This is where people get um, a lot of misinformation. The student account summary is a snapshot of how much they owed at a certain time, but it is not, I advise you don't look at that. Just avoid where it says account summary and click on where under it says my account, click under account summary, or excuse me, account inquiry. That is where it's going to show them their outstanding charges. If they have any pending financial delayed and what they will owe. If a student wants to see that in detail, go down to the second blue arrow and click on account activity. And basically for the term and then for the year, it will show the detail of the charge. Okay. So if students go to account activity, that's where they'll see the detail accounts of their charges and any kind of financial aid or any payments made by anybody, that will be in detail there. If they want to see their financial aid, they go to where the green arrow says view financial aid. And they will be able to see the whole year. And if they scroll down further, they'll be able to see it broken down by fall and by spring. And then if they register for the summer and they're receiving financial aid for summer, it will show the summer aid, which will not be shown until you typically march. So um, what are the payment plans that are available to students? Under the financial services, they have a payment plan that allows the family to take whatever the balance is, um, if they have a balance of more than $400, and spread it over three equal payments. The first is due August, the second September, and the third is October. If they have a balance again due when the spring charges are on, which will be assessed in December, then they can also set up a payment plan again over three months. There is a $50 charge to set this up, but it is um, a pretty easy payment plan for them to set up electronically. Now, what if the student still has a balance and they can't and the family can't cover the cost the recommendations that we have are first if a lot of times students don't take all of their student loans out 
Typically, they're going to take out their subsidized loan first because it's an interest-free loan while they are in school at least half time. So if they still can't cover the costs, they can look at taking their unsubsidized loan portion and or a parent can apply for a parent loan that is a loan that is um, based on an application process. Uh, they can look at private loans or if they are looking at planning for the coming year, we advise them to look for foundation scholarships and outside scholarships. And I'll give you those uh, websites a little bit further. Just to go over briefly the parent loans, since I am dealing mostly with the parents tonight, uh, you know that this is a federal loan. It requires an application and a credit check, but as I like to say, it's based on as long as you don't have negative credit, many family members are approved. There is also an appeal process if you're denied. The interest rate for this current year is 7.54. There is a loan origination fee of 4.23%. Uh, uh, that's deducted from the loan. Repayment begins 60 days after the last disbursement in spring. And there is typically a 10 year repayment uh, period for this, this loan. Student uh, parents can take this out. They need, if they're going to take it out each year, please know that they have to apply for the PLUS loan each year. It's not a guarantee year after year. Now, I'd mentioned scholarships. The Cal Maritime Foundation scholarships, um, we have a process, an application process that begins mid-November and ends usually the last week of January. Students can apply for this every year and they, and really to be considered for scholarships each year within the campus, they need to apply every year. There can be criteria that can be based on GPA, on merits or good standing in the core, uh, community service, and a well-written essay. Um, the committee meets in February, and then we try to notify students in March. If a student does receive a scholarship, they must write a thank you letter in order for that scholarship to pay. Um, I will tell you that right now, um, about 95% of the students who apply are going to get a scholarship that can range as little as a thousand and as high as 5,000. Um, we have a lot of good scholarships that are given out by generous donors for a variety of reasons that can be based on their major, it can be based on where they're from or circumstance, but we encourage students, no matter their financial situation, to apply for these each year. Um, and the awards that are, are determined this year are going to be for the following year. So they'll be for the 23-24 academic year. We also have outside scholarships. Um, I really strongly encourage parents and students to look at the financial aid web pages. Um, the first page that we have are based on just outside scholarships, which are based on how students identify themselves, whether is it's by uh, gender, um, ethnicity, veteran, women. We have a variety of how people identify. The second scholarship page we have are specific to students' majors. We have well over 70 scholarships that we have researched every year uh, that students apply for. We give them the deadline in many cases and the link to that scholarship application. We have already done the research. We know that these are legitimate free scholarship application sites. So we strongly encourage students to apply for those scholarships. Now the refund process. Financial aid will pay typically be shortly before the first week of classes. Refunds will then be set up after that. And if a student is owed a refund, it will be sent to their home address. The check, a physical check will be sent to their home address unless they have set up direct deposit. Now we strongly encourage for security reasons and for ease of access to their refund that they set up the direct deposit and they can do that on through their student portal. Now, if a parent has taken out a parent loan and they wanted the refund based on that parent loan, they had to have asked for that during the application process. Once the, that process is complete, we can't go back and change it so it can't be sent to the student or the parent unless the parent had already determined that at the time that they set up their application. 
Now, financial aid does have a few policies that students must adhere to. And like any good taxpayer out there, you wanna make sure that, uh, we wanna make sure that our taxpayer money is spent well and appropriately. The federal government has set up what's called satisfactory academic progress policy. And it's based on any type of financial aid a student receives, whether it's a student loan or a scholarship or a grant. The students have two criteria that they must meet in order to maintain their aid eligibility each year. One, the first one is that they have to maintain a cumulative GPA of 2.0 or better. That's a C average or better. If it is a 1.99, they're not meeting academic progress. The second thing is that students need to make progress within a reasonable time frame. And I will tell you that our students at Cal Maritime are very ambitious and hardworking. And I have not met a student who has gone beyond 150% of the published length of time based on their major. Um, they want to get in, they want to finish their program, and they want to graduate and get out into the workforce with a, such a passion that this is never been an issue. But I do need to let you know that those are the two requirements, both, both qualitative and quantitative. Now, if a student does not meet one or both of those terms, we review their grades at the end of the spring term. If they have not met the criteria, such as most likely a GPA of 2.0 or better, they will be placed on financial aid probation. They will need to submit an appeal so that they can be considered for future aid eligibility. And if granted, aid will pay for the fall term only. Then we will review their GPA at the end of the fall term. If they again have not made a 2.0 or better, they will lose their eligibility for the spring term. And the only way to regain that is to hopefully find alternative sources to pay for spring, get their GPA up, or go to uh, a community college, or perhaps their summer school courses will help let them regain um, standing for their GPA. Now, lastly, the, most, the four most important things. If a cadet wants to be considered for any kind of financial aid, they need to file the FAFSA by March 2nd each year. No FAFSA, no aid. And I explain this the best way possible is to let students know that um, as a first year student, students probably filed their FAFSA with their parents, or maybe they were independent and filled it out by themselves. But typically we find out when a student is a sophomore, they're here at the time they should be filling out their FAFSA. And they may not have an opportunity to talk to their parents about completing that FAFSA for the coming year, and they forget. And usually I hear from them when the bills go out during the summer. So I just wanna remind you, we do send out reminders quite often letting students know if they filed a FAFSA this year, we're gonna send them a reminder every two weeks to file their FAFSA again for the coming year. So please make sure you have it on your schedule that they file a FAF the FAFSA every year. Second, we really encourage students to check their PeopleSoft account weekly to make sure that there's nothing remaining on their to-do list or on a hold to make sure that their balance is paid in full because if it's not, they won't be able to register for the, the next term. So it's important they check that to-do list, ch check their um, account summary, make sure that they're on track with everything. We also encourage students to make sure they check their Cal Maritime regularly or have it forwarded to their personal email account. Um, I always tell the story of a student last year who I contacted to apply for a scholarship, a $6,000 scholarship actually, and never heard from the person. There was a special application they needed to apply for. And I kept sending email reminders. And sure enough, in a, con in a conversation that he had with one of our counselors, he said, oh, I never checked my email. Well, he lost out on a $6,000 scholarship. So I encourage people to make sure they check their CSUM email or make sure that it is forwarded to their personal email. It is our official means of communication and it's the only way we can get important information to them. Lastly, in a best case scenario, the student starts classes here, they're in the scheme of things, they're feeling comfortable and everything's going great. 
but once in a while we may have a situation that is not within their control or it's something that just doesn't work with them and they have a need to withdraw completely from their classes. If they have financial aid, we want the student to visit with a financial aid counselor and their academic advisors so that they understand what the financial impact is if they withdraw from the term. It is really, really important um, that they are in contact with us. That's what we're there here for, is to make sure that we help them navigate through this situation in the best possible way. So I have finished with all of the information that we have to offer you. Um, Vanita, we're ready to open it up for questions. So um, I've been looking at chat and there aren't any questions that people have um, typed in that speaks uh, to Priscilla, the preciseness of uh, your presentation. Maybe they uh, were waiting to get all the information from you and, um, and we might see some, um, see some pop up. Uh, is it possible to make the slides available to print at home? Um, could you do that, uh, Priscilla? Uh, yes. Um, I can. I can share it. I can. If you can um, share it, that'd be yes. terrific. If yeah. it's okay with you, I can of share course. it. Of course. Um, thank you. I'm going to um, put a um, link in chat, and that'll tell you where to go look for this. And I'll upload the PowerPoint. Um, maybe give me a day or so to put it there and you can um, you can find it in that location. And also just to let you know, we will be giving this presentation to all of our students this fall as well. Uh, we wanna make sure that we get this information out to as many students as possible to help them. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, I'm copying the image, uh, the link now and putting it back in here. Um, so this is also the location where the recordings of our Zoom sessions are placed. So please give me a day or so to upload uh, Priscilla's um, PowerPoint there. Is there a list of scholarships? And if so, where can we find them? Yes. If you go to the financial aid website, and you can easily find that on our land on the landing page for Cal Maritime under admissions, if you scroll on, if you just... Uh, put your um, mouse on admissions, you'll see costs and financial aid, go to that site and you will see on the left-hand uh, menu, you'll see uh, Cal Maritime scholarships, um, outside scholarships and maritime scholarships. Priscilla, did you say if, uh, once you go to the financial aid webpage, what was the next thing to look for in the left column? Uh the left column has a menu, and if they scroll down to the bottom, they will see all of that information. They just click on it, and it will take them to a, a page that gives them all of that information. Got it. Um, we also have lots of great details on financial aid and the financial services. If you have difficulty sleeping at night, it's a great sleep aid. Um, it is content heavy with uh, FAQs on both financial services, as well as financial aid. Um, thank you. Uh, Frank, is there anything you wanna add with regard to uh, when our payments are due, how, what's the process, credit card versus um, other methods of payment, cashier hours and such? Um, well, currently uh, payments are actually due tomorrow, uh, August 5th. We're um, we're setting up some uh, de deferment, payment deferment agreements uh, in case uh, can't meet the deadline because of maybe some additional fees that were posted after you uh, made um, your, your original payments and that type of thing. Um, in our cash net site, we accept all forms of payment, um, e-checks, uh, bank cards, um, or you can uh, send us a physical check as well to the cashier's office. Um, we also at the cashier's office uh, distribute um, parking permits are available there. If um, once you get, you know, if you need to get on campus and, and get a permit to which you need a permit everywhere on campus. So uh, I want to you know, contact us for that too. 
Thank you, Frank. Mm -hmm. um, and for those families who will be uh, here on campus dropping off your student on the 21st, which is a Sunday, uh, Frank has graciously offered to be open that day. So the cashier in the administration building will be available. Um, can you remind us of the time frames uh, you will be open? Um, what do we establish? Yeah, uh, seven to two. Seven, seven, seven to, to two. two. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> so if there is any need to see the cashier, please uh, visit them seven to two on the Sunday. And just so you know, your student will have about an hour of break every day of uh, orientation week. It's called cadet. A business break in the middle of the day, and that'll allow them to visit the cashier, the financial aid office, the registrar's office, their faculty, whoever is open in offices in, in offices are open, they will have a chance to go conduct business with them. This is the first time we're trying that and we're really excited uh, to have that um, opportunity for cadets to connect with our, our staff. Um, has um, going to shift to chat for questions. Has all financial aid been awarded at this time? All, ex with the exception of athletic scholarships have not been put on yet. That's the only thing we are still waiting on. We hope to have that uh, applied next week. So if there is a student who's been told by their coach, um, then they would take that amount uh, based on whether it is fall and spring or fall only and deduct that from what they owed. Thank you. Can, can parents talk to financial aid office? You can, and with an exception. Okay. Up to the point when your students begin classes, we can have a conversation on anything. Once the student has officially started the classes, once they're here, we have to have written permission from your child in order to discuss things with you you will be given an opportunity, or actually I should say your students will be given an opportunity to fill what's called a third party authorization. They will do that through the registrar's office. They will need to put down the, the person, their relationship, make sure they don't just put mom or dad or grandma. We need the, the full, full name, legal name. And they will also tell us specifically what we can discuss with you. We have to check that. It's called FERPA. It's it's basically protecting their right to privacy. But we can only have that conversation once we have their written permission. So up to that point, yes, call us, talk to us. We can be you know available to, to families. We would like this to be a conversation though of students and parents. We really feel that we want to keep that line of communication open with everyone. Thank you. Um, Frank just looks like he turned off his camera, but maybe he can answer. Is there a payment that avoids any search has, uh, surcharges? Um, or are there any surcharges on payment? Um, there, there is a, 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 a 2.65% 2, a 2 surcharge for um, the bank cards because we go through a third party provider. Um, uh, electronic uh, check payments can avoid the surcharge. Um, there's an option on the uh, payment site that that says um, it's listed as bank account, and and you we will put your uh, routing number in and your your bank account number in. And um, if you're familiar, that's similar to other other types of forms. We're just giving us the banking information to charge. Thank you. And what what's your what are your thoughts on cash? Are we taking cash at the cashier's office? Oh, excuse me. No, no. Uh, we are a cashless uh, campus. Thank the you. Moment, so <laughs> there's no cash at any of our at, at the not the cashier's office. I don't believe there's a cash in the uh, the dining center or anything either. Is there? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, a parent wants to know what does it mean do now and future do. That's on, uh, Frank, remember that's on the uh, landing page for the student, the one I said to avoid that because it doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, I'm, I can reach out to one of my colleagues here, to um, Judy or Cora Avenue. Yes, um, so on the Student Services Center, as Priscilla has mentioned earlier, uh, the, um, if you go on CashNet, you would see the overall uh, balance that would be due 
Um, it doesn't show everything on the Student Services Center page. Um, but if you click on that account summary on the on the student page, it will show all the outstanding charges. It will show pending aid, and then if there's an amount due, it will be on the right right side column. So the 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 participant who wrote that question, are you good with the answer you got? If not, you can put another clarification in uh, chat. Um, Account summary versus account inquiry. Can you review where to find the breakdown of fees and when they are due and how to pay them? So it's a triple part. Can you show us? Okay, I'm gonna go back to uh, share screen. Is it up? Not yet. We haven't yet. shared anything. Okay, let me try this one. How about there? Nope. Hmm. All right. This is the last choice I have right here. This one here. Ah, oh, okay. you're screen sharing. Yay. Okay. okay. Let me go to that site. Okay. So if you can see this, uh, wait a minute. One more. There we go. If you scroll down to where it says finances. If you scroll, if you click on the, the second blue arrow, if you click on that to account activity, you will see all of the detailed charges. But if you just want a snapshot, the most current snapshot, if you click on right above that first, at that first blue arrow where it says account inquiry, that is where you will see outstanding charges and, and billable items. In the middle, it will show pending aid, if there's any pending aid that they have accepted. And the right-hand side, once it will show if there is a balance due. Now, as Frank said, these uh, the bill is due tomorrow, but if you contact the cashier's office, if, there, if, not all, if all of the billable items are not on the student's account yet, um, you can certainly talk to the cashier's office about deferring some of that payment. So on that note, Priscilla, there are, uh, Frank, actually, there's a question. What time does the office open tomorrow? I need to contact the office. I'm assuming they're, um, they're saying cashier's office. Regarding payments coming from 529 account. Um, so if you can share that information and also uh, perhaps an alternative, tomorrow is a big day and if the cashier is going to be busy with calls. Is there another way they can reach the cashier via email or text? Um, could you share that as well, Frank? Yeah, the um, we're the cashier was open at eight thirty to um, four, I believe, and uh, we are at the email address is um, cashier the word at csum.edu. Is it just cashier at csum.edu? Yes. I think it was on one of the slides there as well. I think the one we have on that, our slide is student financials at CSUM. So either one will get them. Okay. There's another one? Okay. Yeah. So I, I did put cashier at CSUM in the chat as well. So if somebody wants to copy and paste and have it accessible. Um, any other questions? Uh, I'm not seeing anything in chat, so I'm gonna take a moment to uh, invite anyone who's not been able to type up their question to uh, unmute and verbally request information. We'll give it a few seconds. And after that, um, I would love to cover uh, some details on the 21st. So um, we have someone saying that they went to the link but could not figure out how to print the slides. Okay, um, I haven't posted the slides yet. Please allow two days for me to get this uh, slideshow up on our webpage. So thank you um, for being patient with us. I appreciate that. Um, so anyone? You, just to let you know, excuse me, I'm sorry, Vanita. No, you no. Can, if you go to the financial aid landing page, 
we have FAQs that explain everything in detail that even expand beyond what these 17 slides show you. So that information is readily available right now on the financial aid webpage. All right, that's very helpful. Um, so anyone unmuting to ask question, ask their question verbally? <coughs> All right, um, with that, I would like uh, to take a moment and offer my gratitude to Priscilla and Frank and Judy for being here this evening. Um, and since we don't have any questions for the presenters, you guys are more than welcome uh, to hop off the call. And those uh, family members who wish to stick around and haven't heard my spiel yet about what to expect on the 21st, I'm happy to just go down the list of uh, for that day um, and ask answer any questions that are unrelated to financial aid and student financials. With that, thank you very much uh, for being with us today. Uh, hang on or hang out with us if you'd like, but uh, you're welcome to hop off as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, uh, so family members, um, I am very excited that you guys will all be here and uh, the 21st of August is going to be a very hectic big day for all of you emotionally and um, hopefully not too physically challenging, but please prepare to, um, uh, to walk around campus. So wear comfortable shoes. Um, we are almost ready to send an email to your students. I uh, heard from Residential Life today that those emails will go out, close a business tomorrow. Um, that'll tell your student their room number, their res hall name, and their roommate. Uh, it'll also give them a little bit of a rundown of what I've said the last couple of times and what I'll cover right now. So they will be in the know as well. Um, They'll be requested to arrive at a certain time. And we really would appreciate if you came a few minutes before that, allowing yourself time to park and walk over to our check-in location. So um, you will be directed to park in lot O, which is the very first uh, piece of property for our campus. Um, you will see cadets as well as our uh, police folks directing you to park there, you'll get out of your car and go to the building right next to it, which is our physical education and aquatic center. It is also referred to as PIAC. So you will go in there, you will check in and your student will be um, guided to go into the basketball courts, the large gym inside the building to collect their uniform. They will be given a a sheet of paper that will tell them you get two khakis, two shirts, three this, one pair of shoes, a belt, whatever is on that list. Um, they will pick that up in that room and put it in a box that we will provide. And when they've done that, they will need to get back in the car and have you guys drive them to their residence hall. So for example, if you um, your time is seven, you need to come and be in PIAC at seven for check-in and in about 30 minutes to 40 minutes, uh, be up at your res hall, which means you'll take your box, get in your car, drive up there uh, to your res hall. And it sounds very complicated, but we'll hopefully have a rhythm and lots of students to help you. Uh, you'll, the person who's driving the car will just be there um, uh, in the car, we'll help you unload the car. Family members who are not the driver can hop off. The student hops off and they go into the room to put the stuff and check out where they're going to be staying for the next year and all of that good stuff. The driver comes back down and parks in lot O. You will have um, shuttles to drive you back up. You could walk back up. You could go um, 
to a pre-arranged location, meet for lunch, whatever needs to happen between your family. Um, you have the time, uh, open time from when you check in till three o'clock. At three o'clock, um, the president is looking forward to meeting with all the families. And then we have a panel uh, of experts on campus who are going to uh, talk to you about sense of belonging, how we create community on our campus between our students. Um, and then there is a capping ceremony. So three o'clock with the president, four o'clock with the panel and five o'clock outside in what we call the quad where your students will have been practicing and be ready for you to cap them, which is a very sweet uh, and uh, memorable event or ceremony of sorts. We'll do that and uh, you will then be able to take your cadet for dinner on your own, the marketplace where uh, students are going to be eating from here on will um, be open for you to dine there, watch the sunset. We have a beautiful picturesque uh, campus. Uh, you are welcome to go off campus. Uh, we do ask that if your student um, has any exchanges of uniforms, they make that between six and eight back at PIAC um, so that they have the right sized uniforms moving forward. I know it's a lot and I've got it memorized in my head, so it seems so easy, but um, it will be a few steps. We will be there to help you through them. If you have any questions that are leading up to that time, please email me at orientation at um, That is all I have about the 21st, but I'm happy to take any questions that are related to uh, moving day or anything else that's on your mind and I'll be quiet now until I hear from you or see a question pop up. Um, cadets can come in their civvies um, on that day and when they're picking up the uniform they will be separately handed out what we are, what we call PT gear which is a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and their ball cap. They'll be given a bag that they can put those three items separately in that bag. And sometime during uh, the day between their check-in time and 2.30 PM when they're in their room, they should put that uh, uniform on, which is a regular t-shirt and a pair of athletic shorts. They'll keep those on uh, for their formation uh, and capping ceremony. Great question, thank you. Uh, what do the cadets need to buy that is not in the sea bag? So we've requested the bookstore to be open on that day um, as family members. We invite you to go to the bookstore and um, get whatever else the parents uh, that your cadet needs. Um, they can also uh, buy things later. Uh, you can also buy stuff from other department stores if it's something generic um and does that answer or is there any specific um anything else that you meant with sea bag until that shows up please um uh, we would like for you to bring with you black socks and white t-shirts which is part of their uh which is part of their normal everyday uniform requirement. Uh, we will provide your student with two pairs of shoes. One is their Bates, which is a regular black leather shoe that they will wear with their khakis. And they will have another boot, um, as a pair of boots that uh, they can wear on the ship and such. So they'll have those two things. We will have shorts, the PT shorts that will be provided to them. There are no other shorts that are part of the uniform. And um, sea bags is uh, a term anymore. Uh, we will be providing a big tote box for them to put everything in there. Uh, it's not literally a sea bag. Uh, if your student wants to buy a sea bag for any reason, they are welcome to buy one from, um, the, from the bookstore at some point, but on the moving day, we'll be giving you a big sturdy um, tote box in which to put all the uniforms.
Um, so when you're packing, uh, if possible, it's not gonna be always possible, but if possible, save room for a tow box in which the uniforms will be placed and handed to you. Should you not have room, we will make every effort to deliver that box to your uh, student's room sometime during that day. Because I, I can imagine how things can grow as you're leaving uh, and there might not be space, but we'd like for you to uh, be mindful that you need to put a box in there. All right, um, if there are no additional questions, I'd like for everyone to return to their evening and enjoy a wonderful dinner. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Um, and in the meantime, if you have any questions, again, see some orientation at csum.edu. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful weekend as well. Bye-bye.